The history that we were all taught growing up is wrong. My name is Scott Walter, and I'm a forensic geologist. There's a hidden history in this country that nobody knows about. There are pyramids here, chambers, tombs, inscriptions. They're all over this country. We're going to investigate these artifacts and sites, and we're going to get to the truth. Sometimes history isn't what we've been told. I'm 30 feet below the surface of a Utah lake, searching for Montezuma's treasure. Yeah, that Montezuma. The guy who led the Aztecs in the early 1500s, but who might be better known for Montezuma's revenge, the illness no traveler to Mexico wants to get. All right, guys, can everyone hear me? Yep, we hear you, Scott. I wouldn't be down here, diving for the treasure, if it weren't for an anonymous package I received a few weeks ago. When I discovered this map, I wasn't sure what to think. I'd seen it before. It's called the Disternal Map. An expert I met received one too, along with the same cryptic message. Please put this to good use. I came across it while investigating whether Aztecs from Mexico had an American connection either through an ancient homeland in the Southwest or underwater pyramids in Wisconsin. Now that's a trip I remember vividly. I got stuck at the bottom of Rock Lake under thousands of pounds of water. And I came up empty. No Aztec pyramids. But maybe the map means my investigation into the Aztecs isn't over. 
The Aztecs dominated the central region of Mexico between the 14th and 16th centuries. Their most famous leader was Montezuma. According to legend, the Aztecs came from a place called Aztlan in the north. The disternal map places it near the Four Corners region where Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah meet. But on the map I received, there is another reference to the Aztecs. The words, Montezuma's curse over Utah. If this was more evidence that the Aztecs got their start in the United States, not Mexico, I had to check it out. The first clue I wanted to understand was the name inscribed on the back of this gold trinket, Freddy Crystal. I get a lot of tips, but not usually one so tantalizing and cryptic. Who was this Freddy Crystal? And what's his connection to Montezuma? I managed to track down one person who just might know. And we're meeting in the middle of the Utah desert. Lois? Yeah? This mysterious package that I received, the name Freddy Crystal was in there. Tell me a little bit about him. Freddy Crystal showed up almost 100 years ago in Kanab, and with him he brought a map that he said he'd found in a Mexican monastery. Mm -hmm. And he thought that map showed evidence that the Aztecs had come back to Utah. And the topography on that map matches the topography of this place where I brought you today. Okay. What is it that Freddy was looking for? Well, Freddy was looking for gold. Gold? Mm -hmm. Aztec gold? Yeah. Here? When the Spanish conquistadors made contact with the largest empire in South America, the Aztecs, they also wrote about the massive treasure they found there. According to one account, the sheer quantity of valuables was breathtaking. Golden face masks and necklaces, incredibly ornate weaponry, silver plates and cups, and the list goes on. The Aztecs gave the Spanish so many of these gifts, it took the conquistadors three whole days to examine them. Eventually, war broke out between the Spanish and Aztecs, and legend has it the huge treasure just disappeared. So he was in this area, and what was he looking for? Well, he believed that the Aztecs had gone back to Utah, and he was looking for evidence of them, some tunnels, rock art, stuff like that. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Is this something that I could see? You bet. It's on government land, but I've, I've gone ahead and got some approval for us to go there today. Grab your stuff, and I'll, I'll show you where. All right. This part of Utah is considered canyon country. It's beautiful and remote. The perfect place to hide something you wouldn't want anyone to find. Lois, you talked about that Freddy had maps that he got down in Mexico that led him to here. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, he thought that was the gold, right? That yeah. the gold was here somewhere? Can I see these maps? No, they're gone. i uh, done lots of research, can't find the maps. In fact, Freddy himself disappeared after 1922. Disappeared? Yeah, killed, maybe committed suicide, maybe took on an alias. So has anybody else tried to find this treasure in this area? A number of people have. Uh, most of them stop looking, though, because bad things start happening to them. Bad things? Like what? Well, some of them have almost died. Some of them have died. Really? Oh, yeah, plenty. More recently, we've had people scuba dive for the gold. Wait a minute. Where are they going to scuba dive? I mean, there's no water here. There's actually an underground water cave not too far from this area. Oh, there is? Yeah. And they went scuba diving inside this cave? They tried to. Every time they went down, professional divers, they'd go down, equipment failures, lights go out. 
one of the guys that went down, he claimed a mouthpiece was torn out of his mouth and another felt hands around his neck. It freaked him out that they didn't want to dive anymore. They don't even want to talk about it. Are you talking about a curse? Somewhere in this vast expanse of Utah desert, Montezuma's treasure is supposedly buried. At least that's what I've learned since receiving a mysterious map with a cryptic message. Stories about sudden death, mysterious disappearances, and ill-fated scuba dives have led many to believe that the Aztec treasure is cursed. But I have to wonder, what's the real story behind what seems like a myth? So these divers actually had the regulators torn out, they right. felt like they were being choked, and yeah. all these things were happening. Are you talking about a curse? Well, a lot of people believe it is cursed. What you're talking about sounds like something is protecting the gold from being found. Is there something to that? Well, after Montezuma was killed, his successor sent warriors, slaves with the gold. Some people estimate maybe 2,000 had to travel okay. north. To and get it away from the Spanish, right? Yes, get it away okay. from the Spanish. And then uh, when they hid the treasure, the Aztecs believed in human sacrifice. So they killed the slaves, probably some of the warriors, with the idea that they would stay here and guard the gold. What do you think? Do you think there's a curse here? I don't really believe in curses, but I've never had to look for the treasure. <laughs> okay. I do know a, a fair number of people in Kanab believe in it. Absolutely. Okay, those have got to be the caves right there, right? Yeah, they're right up there. When Freddy arrived here, the cave had been walled up with stone and mortar. He didn't have any tools. He flipped out a pocket knife and scraped away at the, the limestone. Then he had to call in other people. Three quarters of the town came up and helped Freddy. That was about 1,000 people. They finally did get the wall down, got inside, and the bulk of the cave had been backfilled with sand. So the Aztecs sealed it up to seal something inside. Yeah, or well, to keep people out. Or to keep people out. Yeah. I think we need to go in and take a look. What do you think? The government is a little worried about the safety of it, but we can go peek in. We just can't go in all the way. All right, well, let's do that. Look at these deep tool marks here. This is excavation here that went on. I mean, you can see these deep gouges. Uh, That's they how were, they made the cave? They were tunneling. And the thing about it is, is this rock type, this sandstone, is perfect for tunneling. They probably took advantage of some natural features that were here, and they just extended them. Okay. But there's no doubt that we've got tool marks here, and you see them going all the way around. We couldn't explore the cave, but urban explorers have. They found deep tunnel systems with small nooks that could have been used to hide treasure. What's more? there appear to be booby traps, endless holes in the floor that seem to go on forever. It makes sense that people aren't allowed in the caves anymore. Someone who doesn't know what they're doing could get hurt or even killed. I have to say that that was incredible. I mean, we've got a, a very complex tunnel system and my mind is racing right now trying to put it all together. But here's what I think we have. This would be the entrance, or the, the original entrance, probably. It's clearly man-made. This is a system of tunnels and booby traps mm -hmm. and steps and what looks like a repository. Dwelling caves would be larger and they would be more compartmentalized. These are tunnels. Yeah. The Aztecs, if this was their ancient homeland, they went to Mexico, they were under siege by the Spaniards, and they took their gold and brought it up here. To me, that makes the most sense. I mean, the evidence all comes together, and it points to the Aztecs. Yeah.
So what happened when Freddie was here? What exactly did they find? Well, they did find bones, they found some beads, but no treasure. I think that it was probably originally dug out and was thought to be the final repository, uh -huh. but something could have happened that changed the plan. I think Montezuma's treasure was probably right here, but it's not at this location, so that means it has to be somewhere out here. As part of what I received in this strange package was uh, what looks like a petroglyph. Let me show it to you. See if this rings any bells for you. Oh, I've seen that before. Oh, you have? Yeah. It's uh, carved in the walls by the place where that scuba diving incident happened. Okay, so the petroglyph this curse, mm -hmm. it's all in the same place. You know, I'd really like to see this if I could. Oh, not a problem. I know a guy who knows a lot about petroglyphs. You know, Lois, the more I think about this, this mysterious package is not just about this Aztec America connection. I think we know that's there, mm -hmm. but this is really also about Montezuma's treasure. And that treasure appears to be cursed. It seemed to me that Freddy Crystal was onto something when he came to Utah many years ago and found an ancient cave system that may have been made by the Aztecs. After talking to Lois, I met with the archeologist she told me about. He identified a petroglyph I thought could be the next clue to the mystery. According to legend, Montezuma, the last major king of the Aztec Empire, sent his riches north of Mexico. Evidence suggests they may have made it as far as Utah. An empty cave system there could be one of the places Aztec warriors hid vast amounts of gold and silver. That's what I ended up looking for here, underwater. Many explorers have searched for Montezuma's cursed treasure. Some have even died trying to find it. Hopefully, that won't happen to me. One of the things that got me here was a cryptic clue on a mysterious map. Turns out this same symbol can be found on stones here in the desert. Well, your friend Lois recommended I talk to you about a mysterious symbol. Let me show it to you. Sure. Have you seen that before? Oh yeah, I've, I've seen that many times. What do you know about it? Well, I know that it's uh, unique to this area. Okay. And uh, I've dubbed it the key symbol. The key symbol? Yeah, I think this might be the key to the discovery of Montezuma's treasure. Well, if this is related to Montezuma's treasure, I really need to see some of these. Well, I can show you one not too far from here. All right, I'm in. Cool, let's go. I, let's do it. Aha! Uh -huh. It's the glyph. Wow. So there's a bunch out here. Right. Well, this is more of an oval. Would you say that most of them are ovals or circles? I'd say most are, are circle. It's interesting, this oval shape comes all the way around. This line here comes to the edge of the uh, oval, and then it drops down. And it's deeper here, and it goes all the way off the edge. I can tell you this, this was pecked very deeply and it's very weathered. I think it has been here for a while, decades for sure, maybe a few hundred years. You know, this could be Native American. 
What do you think? I've talked to some of the uh, Kaibab Paiutes and some of the Shivwits, and they say that this isn't part of their culture. Oh, really? Right. So this is not Native American, at least the natives in this area that you've talked to. Right. OK. Let me show you some photographs. What do you see there on that one photograph? Well, this one is more of a circle. There's another pit on the opposite side. Right. There's always one or two holes within the circle or the oval. And some of them are quite deep, like you could stick pegs in them and do a side alignment or something like oh, that. OK. You said most of these were circles, right? Right. That's interesting, because we're talking about the Aztecs here possibly coming up here with this Montezuma's treasure. These lifts could be related. Here's a possibility. It's called a latitude exercise. This ancient knowledge was passed on in cultures all around the world going back thousands of years. And basically, what they could do is they could navigate. They could figure out what latitude they were at simply by using a stick. If the Aztecs did come here, maybe bringing Montezuma's treasure, the way that they could find their homeland by traveling north is to figure out their latitude by using this exercise. Interesting. Now, I don't know if that's what they're doing here, but that's another possibility. It certainly is. Can you see how important and powerful this could be? Well, this one is interesting because it's got the lichen. And the lichen growth on there is old. We've okay. done a lichenometry test on it, and it dated over 500 years. OK. Fall of the Aztec Empire was about 500 years ago. Take a look at this photo, Scott. It has a double line coming off the circle. That actually leads to a burial. A burial? It was excavated, and there was three skeletons found, one on top of the other, now, what was amazing about these skeletons is they were all on their left sides in the fetal position with no artifacts. Their legs were broke off just above the ankle and laid next to them. The Aztecs believe that most people who died went to Mictlan, ruled by the god Mictlan Tecutli. It was a dark place without any light or windows, kind of like a womb. That may be why the Aztecs buried their dead in a fetal position, to represent leaving the world in the same position they arrived. One thing's for sure, that fetal burial position suggests that the skeletons I saw pictures of could have belonged to Aztec people. Let me guess, they're gone. They're gone. Do you think that based on this style of burial that this could have been a sacrifice? I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it is. I just don't know. Now the Aztecs, they certainly did practice ritual sacrifice. In fact, it was very important in their culture and their religious activities. To some of the people, it would have been an honor to be sacrificed. And if we are talking about Montezuma's treasure and Aztecs coming into this area, then the possibility exists that there would have been some sacrifices going on. You know, Scott, there's another place that you need to visit. There's a cave, an underwater cavern, that has this glyph in the ceiling that's been painted on. Many people think that this is the site of Montezuma's treasure. Really? Under the water, there's one of these circle glyphs over there? Right. I got to check this out. When I went to the Utah desert to investigate a very real, but possibly cursed, Aztec treasure, the last thing I expected to find was an underwater cave where the riches may have been stashed. The legendary Montezuma, the Aztec's last great king, is rumored to have ordered his warriors to hide his empire's treasure in Aztlan, their northern homeland. Some people say the land I'm on now is Aslan, and that there are maps to prove it, like the one that has led me here. Turns out the man who owns this land is all too familiar with the legend and the curse, thanks to the stories passed down from his dad. Hey, 
Milan, how you doing? Good, hi Scott, good to meet you. I'm sure you've heard a lot about uh, the mystery of Montezuma's treasure. Uh, many people believe that the Aztecs brought that treasure back to their original homeland, which was believed to be in the Four Corners area. And all indicators that I have seen point to right here. In 1990, my dad, he had been doing a lot of research about the Aztecs. And one of the things that he read about was that uh, the Aztecs liked to hide their treasure in what was called water traps. He'd read that the lakes had to be 35 feet deep. So he came up with a canoe and he measured it out. And it was exactly 35 feet deep. So that really piqued his interest. And my dad purchased the property. And so he started to do a lot of exploring. So this is where your dad was in the boat. This is one of the three lakes. He wanted to get some divers in here see if there was any um, caves. So they started diving along the wall and they found a cave. They started going back into the cave and the woman came swimming up to the side of the man and grabbed his auxiliary mask and started breathing out of it. So they came out and dad was on a boat. They checked out her gear and her tank had been turned off. What? Yeah. And so her tank <laughs> had been turned her off. tank had been turned off somehow. As they turned it back on, they checked their gear all out, and they went back in. They got way back into this cave, and the same thing happened. Apparently, he had a microphone, and, and he started screaming, I'm being choked out, I'm being choked out, I'm seeing ghostly figures. They came up to the boat, and her tank had been turned off again. They packed up their gear, and they took off. And to this day, they don't even admit that they even dove the pond. My dad came to believe that there is a curse. And, um, you know, I think there is too. So the diving thing right. established that there was a cave. What was the next step? Dad hired a, a company out of Salt Lake to come down and do ground penetrating radar okay. up here. What did the GPR find? A series of caves and caverns. So dad hired a well driller. The well driller drilled down with a four inch hole and when they brought the drill bit back out, there was gold on the tip of the drill bit. So do you think that that spot is where Montezuma's treasure is? And the evidence shows that it probably is. Dad asked the driller if he could come back with a 10-inch drill bit. Uh -huh. So they got down about 50 feet, and the drill bit broke off. So they had to quit. He went home that night and had a heart attack and died. Do you think this is part of the curse? Absolutely. Yeah, I really do. Well, the idea of drilling is a really good one. Would you allow me to do some more drilling here? I don't want any more drilling here. We've had, you know, too many tragedies every time we've tried that, so. All right, well, maybe we should rethink the diving thing. Would you allow me to do that? You're welcome to go into the, into the pond and dive. So that's, that's where the cave is? Yep. Lon, you mentioned water traps before. Right. And is that what you think is going on here? Yeah, the geological features here are perfect for a water trap. If I was an excavator, originally this water would just flow all the way down through this canyon. So what the Aztecs did, once they got the caves and caverns built, they put their gold in the cavern, they blocked it off, and then they backfilled the channel to flood the area. Engineering with water is something that wasn't foreign to the Aztecs. Their homeland in Mexico was basically built on a swamp. Right. You mentioned uh, ground penetrating radar that was done up on the top side, right? What they discovered was a cavern system. The cave came off the bottom of the pond and it went in about 200 feet and there was a big cavern. And then from this cavern, there was a cave that came off of this and then on this side, there was a cave that came off and it went up and there was a big cavern right here. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is put on my gear and jump in that lake and go check out that tunnel. But when you talk about diving in tunnels, it's very dangerous. So I have a buddy that I can call who could bring out an ROV, put it in the water, and it can scout out the cave before we go down. Sounds good to me, let's get him. You know what, Lon? If we go down in there and we find evidence of man-made tunnels, then they could be connected to the caverns I've already looked at. And if that's true, Montezuma's treasure could be right down there.
It's been 100 years since a man named Freddy Crystal biked into Kanab, Utah with a tattered treasure map in his hand. He was convinced that this is where the Aztecs hid Montezuma's treasure. My investigation turned up a lot of clues too. Man-made tunnels with spots for hiding treasure, petroglyphs which could have been part of an Aztec navigation system to find the treasure, and a history of bad things happening to people who search for Montezuma's mountains of gold. I wasn't about to let rumors of a curse stop me from trying to solve this mystery. Hey, Eric. Hey, Scott. How you doing? Hey, good to see you, man. Yeah. Thanks for coming on such short notice. I really appreciate it. You see that cave over there? I want to get down to the base of that thing. I think it's about 30 feet deep. Now, here's the story. Uh, you've heard of Montezuma's treasure? Well, yeah, but I never took it seriously. Well, I think we might have to in this case. Back in the early 1900s, a guy named Freddie Crystal came out to this area, brought a bunch of the townspeople to a system of caves. He was looking for Montezuma's treasure. These tunnels are definitely man-made, and it looks like a repository to me. Maybe they put the gold up there, but it's not there now. I think it was moved, and it's quite possible after talking to some of the local people here, it could be down there. In the interest of safety, I'd like to take the rover down before we send anybody into the water. Well, they say if it's uh, dirty, dangerous, dull, or distant, it's better to have a robot do it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Let's show you what you have. You want to grab that laptop? Sure. Hit the table over here. So this is the latest and greatest, huh? Yeah, we just built it a few weeks ago, and it hasn't even been in the water yet. I'm really excited. Huh. Take me through it. OK, well, uh, this is the ROV, and um, it's got this camera in the front. It's actually just a USB webcam like you'd have for your computer. And uh, okay. that sends live video up to the surface. So you can drive it around using this gamepad controller. OK. Should we get this thing in the water? Let's do it. All right. There we go. Flying here? Yeah, I think that's going to be enough. Shall okay. we put her in? Put her in. All right. OK. Well, the camera's working. I can see water. Water, right. but what else is down there? You know, if you want, you can run right into the rock, and then we can just go down. And That's a good idea. Let's keep going. Can you go down a little bit? Yeah, to I'm the initiating bottom? a dive now. Okay. Can you go to the left a little bit there? Yeah, that yeah. Rock? Let, me, let me go there. All right, okay. there we are. Uh, why don't you tilt the camera down? Uh, press okay. the Z button there. All right. All right, there we go. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. All right, so we're on the rock here. Can we go to the left and down a little bit? There we go. OK, there we go. Look at that. You can even see the layers in the rock. Keep going down. Okay. Wow, it keeps going, doesn't it? It does. Can you go back to the right a little bit? I mean, yeah. keep going down. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, that's a lot better. All right, better. there, we can see the bottom, yeah, okay. Look at all that sediment. Wow. Now go down a little farther. The sediment is in the way. That looks like that could be an opening. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Damn it, that sediment just gets in the way. You know what, Eric? There's something down there. I got to get in there. This has been great. This has helped me so much. I think it's safe enough. I'm ready to go down there. Bring in a team of divers. <laughs> There's only one way to find out what's down there. You have to get wet.
A while back, I got the strangest piece of mail. I'd seen the map before, an old treaty document showing the American Southwest as the Aztecs' ancient homeland. But there was more, a strange symbol and a trinket that led me to Kanab, Utah. Legend says the last great king of the Aztecs ordered his warriors to gather the riches of the empire and head north. And people around here think his treasure is in an underwater cave that I think I got a glimpse of with an ROV. I've done some diving in the past, but cave diving is a whole different, dangerous story. But this is my best shot in finding this treasure. So I found a local guy and his team to help me out. Hey, Wolf. Hey, Scott, how are you, man? You've heard of Montezuma's treasure, right? Yes. Well, all indicators point to that cave right there. I have personal friends who've dove this okay. and have had weird experiences. I've talked to a number of people here and they said some pretty interesting things like people pulling the regulators out, they felt like they were being choked. <sighs> Some people think it's a curse. I don't know. I know for sure I'm gonna drive home real careful. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, guys, let's dive. Let's go. All right, guys, can everyone hear me? Yep, we hear you, Scott. All right, well, here's where the ROV showed what looked like a cave entrance. It looks like there's a very narrow entrance to the cave between the bottom of the lake and the top of the cave. It's pitch black in there. Damn it. I really want to keep going, but the entrance, it's just too narrow. Hey, Scott, I've lost visual with you. Turn around. I hear you. I'm in what looks like a tunnel entrance, but there's too much silt. While I don't believe in curses, I definitely believe in bad luck. If we want to see anything down there, we're going to have to do something about all this silt. We're going to have to dredge it out. Guys, there's something wrong with the hose. The damn thing's not working. I'm coming back up. I don't know about you, but I am cold, <laughs> I'm tired, and I'm frustrated. It's just not pulling out enough silt. You're right, and I think I know what's going on. Roger, bring me that core sample. We always sample the cores. Oh, yeah. This is sand. It's halfway full. Yeah, and so what's happening? It'll suck, but it's not pushing. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. Well, it's doing what it can do with sand. You know what? There is a tunnel there. And if this is a water trap that was made by the Aztecs, <laughs> it's a damn good one. That was disappointing. But at least my mask wasn't ripped off my face by some unknown force. Something the landowner told me happened to divers before me. Hey, Scott, how did it go? Well. We went down into the tunnel, and it just got so murky when we got to the bottom. I got to the point where I was literally on my knees, and the tunnel kept going back. And it was kind of creepy, I have to be honest with you. I wasn't being, my regulator pulled out or being choked or anything like that, 
but I felt this urge to want to keep going. And I did go in a ways and then I stopped and I said, this is too dangerous, I can't go in. It got tighter. We brought in the dredging equipment and quite frankly, we didn't have enough equipment to do it. But the heck with that. The simplest way to get in there is to drain that lake. The problem is, have you heard of the amber snail? Amber snail? No. Well, this is the habitat of the amber snail. The amber snail has been put on the endangered species list. In fact, if you hurt one of these snails, it's a $50,000 fine. $50,000? $50,000 a piece. Well, we're not going to be draining the lake, then. No. You know how I told you about those early divers? Yeah. When they went into the cave, they located these square blocks. You can see, obviously, these blocks have been worked. Absolutely. They have definitely man-made blocks. Wow. Well, that's very interesting because Freddie Crystal said that he found a stone and mortar wall sealing the caves over at the other site. Exactly. The other interesting thing about it is, as you can see, there's cement on it. Though it's proved nearly impossible to get into that cave, the best piece of evidence to solve this mystery might be the mortar on these rocks pulled from the lake a few years ago. By analyzing this sample in my lab, I can figure out if the mortar was made using a modern cementing material like Portland cement or something much older, which could date to around the time when the Aztecs would have been in the area. You know what, Lon? This mortar sample could be the final clue to help us know whether that water cave has Montezuma's treasure or not. Back at my lab, I tested the mortar. It's modern. So those rocks pulled from the lake a few years ago weren't connected to the Aztec treasure. My best bet to solve this case would be to drill into that underground cave, but the landowner won't let me. He's worried about Montezuma's curse. I can't blame him. And because of that rare endangered snail, draining the lake is not an option. There's good reason to believe that the Aztec treasure might be hidden in an underwater cave in Kanab, Utah. Trouble is, for now, there's no way I can prove it. If you have a mysterious artifact or site I need to see, I want to know about it. Go to history.com slash unearthed.